Okay, we're going to tie a uh, olive golden stone, olive colored golden stone using a dubbing mix of uh, Wapsi number no. one rabbit that's made out of brown olive, regular olive, and uh, dark olive. So you get uh, kind of a light yellowish colored olive. And uh, the thread is uh, 6 odd or 140 denier black. We're using a uh, White River WSR002 uh, size 8 straight eye uh, round or uh, curved bend hook for nymphs. You can also use the Dairiki 700B or the Dairiki 270 or a 5263 Tiemco 3X long, uh, 1X strong wire for this particular fly. We're, uh, we're going to mount our thread at about three eye widths back th from the uh, hook eye. And we're going to wrap a thread base back to the point uh, over the uh, barb at the bend of the hook. Nice smooth thread base going back. And I like to hold on to an extra big tag end of tying thread in because it adds a little bit of bulk to the thread, make sure everything ties down real nice. Excess. Bring that back just a little bit further. I want to give us as much room to do abdomen and thoraxes on this fly as possible. So we're going to go back to where we should be just about over the point of the barb. Then we're going to make a very small, tight dubbing ball to be able to separate the tails. And your dubbing loop or your dubbing noodle, if you go just one way you get a nice nice tight noodle like that one is. Make a little small ball right there. Tails and antenna on this fly are going to be moose body hair. So we're going to take two moose hair we're going to make sure that we get the tips evened up here. That should be pretty even. We're going to pinch them so that they're about a two-thirds of a hook shank length long. Put them in the material hand. And we're going to try and get those tied on a, both sides of the hook with a loose, a couple loose wraps before we start doing tight wraps. And I like to hold the tails apart with my material hand while I'm wrapping down the the uh, fibers coming up to the dubbing ball there. And if we tighten those down nice and tight against that dubbing ball, you get a nice separation on those on those uh, tails. And we'll trim off the excess. We have a little extra to add a little bulk to the abdomen. And we're going to tie in a piece of copper brown small wire for the ribbing on the abdomen. Wrap up to get that loose stuff tied down. And we're going to wrap back. the dubbing ball. Then we're going to tie in a piece of uh, Rainy Flies one quarter inch wide uh, flex material, golden stone color. And if you look at this you'll see there's a shiny side and kind of a grainy side. And you want the shiny side to go up. And we're going to pinch that so it stays down centered on the hook and we'll do a pinch wrap here. And then we we'll want to spiral wrap this so we can get this tied down. Good, we'll do kind of a spiral wrap up to 
the edge of the thoraxes and then go back to the dubbing ball end. You want to get that kind of tight up against that rib and against that dubbing ball. And we're going to dub a thorax, I mean an abdomen, with the uh, dubbing mixture here, which is, like I said, a kind of a yellowish olive color. And I like to start those that dubbing noodle out pretty tight. And you'll probably have to add at least dubbing to this twice to get this to finish out right. But we'll try and get as much as we can this first wrap on this. We're going to take one wrap behind the wire. And the shell back and then we're going to spiral this forward. that abdomen to be about two-thirds of the hook shank length. Yeah, that's good right there. We'll pull the back covering over it and tie that down. three wraps behind and I like to go a wrap or two in front and another one behind. Trim off our excess. We're going to wrap our wire rib forward and I like to wrap this in a clockwise direction as opposed to the counterclockwise because I think it gives better segmentation. And you kind of want to pull that down hard enough to pull that uh, flex down into the dubbing. Get up there and do a couple wraps behind again and then a two or three wraps over it to go back up and tie that down onto that ramp and then we'll helicopter this off come on there we go helicoptering is a way of saving their scissors so that you don't beat them up so much cutting wire all the time we're going to put some lead weight at the thorax area to add some shape to the fly as well as a little bit extra weight. And I've flattened the end of this wire off to give a flatter tie-in point. Yeah. A couple of wraps there. And then we're going to wrap a thread base forward so that we're only about 25% behind the hook eye. Okay, so we have our wire tied in and our thread wrap forward. We're going to put five or six wraps of lead into the thorax area. This is a number two or two point or a point two zero lead. That's about six wraps, that's good. A couple wraps over behind, a couple wraps in front one more behind, pinch that off, and then we're going to build a nice thread, smooth thread dam leading up to the uh, spiral part of the lead. We're going to go back to about a 45 degree angle and go down to the tie end point to help tie that thread onto the, or the wire onto the uh, hook. Go back up to the front. You have to go through this process a couple of times. And trying to go through it at about a 45 degree angle, you use just slightly less thread than uh, going straight into the wire wraps themselves. Okay, about one more time. Coming down, that'll pretty much cover that lead wire with thread. 
We'll smooth out that tail just a little bit with some thread. Tie that down to the end. Build a nice thread dam over that tail piece there out of the lead wire. Then you want to take a pair of smooth jawed pliers and squeeze this lead slightly so that you get a flattened shape to it. And uh, the flattened shape adds a little more bulk to your thorax area and it also imparts a very nice side to side wiggle action uh, of the fly in the water. Now we're ready to tie on a prepared turkey quill slip for the uh, wing case and this is a, a hook gaped with wide roughly turkey quill slip that's been coated with head cement to help make it a little more stable and keep the fibers together I'm gonna leave about a little extra there tie that in right at the point of the abdomen a couple of loose wraps so that it stays down on top nicely couple of wraps and sometimes the turkey quill will separate that way but it doesn't make any difference because we're going to put uh, loon hardhead on it when we're done and stabilize it and uh, I'm going to use uh, golden brown barred feather from a hand saddle as my legs and we've pulled this pulled the fibers back to the front end of the quill and we're going to tie it in at the back end of the quill so you get a nice tie in point there and it looks like looks like this before you tie it on and we want to tie that on with the curved side facing up so that when we pull it over the curved side is laying down flat and the legs have a downward slope to them. Leave some excess of the butts on there for a little bulk. We're going to make a dub thorax to go on there. Same thing, make a fairly tight dubbing noodle to get started. And I like to dub the thorax just a little bit looser than I do the abdomen area. And you can do this by making two wing pad areas or you can do just one big one. Uh, doing the fly this way where the legs are made out of one feather that's pulled forward, it's just as easy to do one big uh, wing case area. If you do two, you have a nice, nicer profile when looked at from underneath. And I like to pull everything up and make one pass behind so that you got dubbing over everything. Behind, nice transition area. And if you look at stoneflies, they usually have two wing pads. Then they have a, a, a carpal area right behind the head and then they have the head. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can leave just a little space like that and wrap another little noodle for that little area that's right behind the head like that and as you can see we've got lot, enough room in there to put a very small dubbed head and a thread head in there as well as tie in the two antennae so you want to leave probably at least three eye lengths maybe four eye lengths uh, eye widths back from the uh, hook eye as space to work. So we're going to pull our feather forward. Like this. Pull all of our fibers back for our legs. You want to take time when you do this to make sure that you have enough extra in there to work with. In fact, we're going to spiral that about one more time up. I'm going to leave a little extra leg area in there that we can cut off if we need to. A couple 
what wraps to tie that feather down on top of the hook. And we're going to pull our turkey quill forward. And we want to get that flattened out and get as much of the model part on there as we can. Pull everything back this way. Get a couple wraps behind and one more wrap over the back. And we'll trim this off. Trim off the feather. I'm going to leave the extra turkey quill on there. I'm going to add a very small dubbed head on here. turkey quill I'll make a small dubbed head right there like that pull that turkey quill down over it a little bit trim off all that excess stuff get our thread spiraled over right behind the hook eye like a little bit of a thread base right in there. And doing it this way, you've actually produced a, a small dubbing ball also right behind the hook eye. I'm going to use two more moose body hairs for antennae. Again, you want to kind of get your tips as evened up as possible. Put those in a material hand, and those only need to be about one third the hook length. Yeah, there we go. We got them pretty well evened up. Okay, I'm going to put those down right there with a this wrap, a couple tight wraps. Turn that off and we'll make sure that gets separated out. There we go. We'll make our thread head. About a four turn, approximately a four turn whip finish on it. Tie that down, pull it back so it Snugs everything back down in nice and tight. There's our antennae. Thing I like about using natural materials is uh, that they're durable. You can kind of mush them around and they last pretty good out on the stream. Um, uh, one of the final steps to this fly is to coat your uh, wing case with epoxy, coat it with uh, clear cure, cure goo, tack free or thin formula and cure it or you can use loon hardhead. I happen to like the hardhead clear because when it dries you get a, a nice, it's clear and you can see the wing case underneath and, and the modeling on the wing case shows up and comes through. Now that's just a personal thing, the fish probably don't care one way or the other. Clear Cure Goo works pretty good too. So we're going to take and put a coat of this on. Dry time on this, you want two coats, and the dry time is usually about uh, three minutes, four minutes a coat. And I like to spread a little of this right onto the back itself. We're going to bring that up and we're going to coat that clear up to and including right where the tie-in is on the antenna to help stabilize those and to cover the head just a little bit. And this first coat, you want it to so give it time to kind of soak in good. And I like to bring it right along the edge of the leg fibers 
where they go under the wing case because that helps to again kind of stabilize them and this will soak into the into the dubbing on the thorax and you want to make sure you get both sides pretty good right along those edges so at this point there isn't much to do except let that dry and then we'll do, put another coat on okay we're going to put a second coat of uh, Loon Hard Head Clear on the thorax area again I kind of like to get a nice little bubble up there and then drag that down just a tiny bit onto the legs on each side it helps to stabilize those legs and we'll let that dry and you'll have close to what it would amount to an epoxy shell back on that nice and clear and you can see from looking at the video you can see the modeling on the turkey quill right through that and it'll dry just about that that way and that'll take about oh, probably three or four minutes to dry so it's a little bit of a hassle to, lay, to do it and let it dry but you know you get a couple minutes on this you can put it off on your on your uh, drying t uh, pad or whatever you use to hold your flies while they're in the process of drying so that's basically it. Gets dry. We'll turn this over, and you can look at the top view of it. This is a do it in that position. this is the top view of the finished fly, and uh, once you get the loon hardhead clear, really dry, you can see how you've got the striations of the uh, turkey quill underneath. You can see those coming through that, and it's just like epoxy in there, which epoxy usually dries real clear that way, and this will stay on that fly just as good as epoxy will. Uh, or at least pretty close to it, and it's a lot easier. You got a little more time to work with it than you do with the uh, epoxy stuff. And uh, the last thing is, we're going to take a brown uh, sharpie marker, uh, pointed tip, and we're going to color the back of that fly just a little bit brown and a little bit brown on the sides. Okay, the last part of this fly is to take a brown sharpie marker and real carefully, you come along sides and the top and color this just a tiny bit just about that much just like that because the real fly actually is brown and and kind of a lightish color uh, band in between the ribbing and uh, that's where this uh, copper brown wire will give you the lighter effect in there. Color that just a little bit. And that's it. That's your golden stonefly. Very last step is you take a this is a homemade dubbing brush with a popsicle stick and a piece of velcro on it. And real carefully you want to rough that up just a little bit underneath for your gills. Right in there. Just a little bit like that. There's your gill area. So this is your fly. That's your golden stone. Got a nice wing case, nice legs, lots of wiggle. I believe in wiggle when flies. I think it helps attract fish. There we go.